Some people say games just aren't fun anymore, and then on the other side of things you got the people who say that modern game design's the best it's ever been and people who still love old games are blinded by nostalgia. And I've been thinking about this discourse lately, it got me to pondering. There is clearly a spectrum here running from retro game purists through to modern game fanatics and there's plenty of space in the middle of that for the rest of us, but the debate is still kind of interesting. Is it actually the case that older games tended to yield a better experience, or is that line of thinking just purely based on nostalgia? And of course there is no objective way to say if on the whole games are better or worse now than they used to be, but just go with me on this little example here. It is 1999, and you've been to your chosen video game shop or rental place to pick up a new game, probably the one and only game you're going to play this week or maybe even this month. So you're in the backseat of your parents' car on the ride home and you're reading through the manual, learning all about the game you're going to play. The characters you'll meet, the places you'll go, maybe the weapons or vehicles you'll use. You're pretty hyped up and you can't wait to play the damn thing. So you get home, slam that bad boy into your chosen console, ready to rock. Maybe you're playing on your own, maybe with friends, maybe family, doing couch co-op. Whatever the case, you're going to be sitting in front of that CRT for hours, playing late into the night, hopped up on fizzy drinks and snacks. And the game's probably going to seem really big and mysterious to you because outside of the manual, your only source for info is going to be schoolyard gossip, which isn't necessarily going to be too reliable. Maybe you even get spicy and buy a strategy guide to learn all the secrets. If you're a similar age to me, maybe that does sound familiar. And if you're a bit younger, maybe it doesn't. But what I just described there is nostalgia, pure and simple. My own nostalgia, mind you, you might have had totally different experiences like Halo LAN parties or racking up hours in RuneScape or whatever it might have been. But chances are, we all have our own treasured memories of gaming, something that made it feel a bit more special for us. And I think that's the heart of this matter, how it made us feel. But I don't totally think that is a nostalgia thing either. It is genuinely the case that the experience of playing a video game, the rituals surrounding it if you will, I've all changed quite a bit over the 30 some years of my life. The way we tend to consume media generally these days, everything including video games, is geared towards being faster paced and so that can result in feeling less immersive. In the story I just told, I came home with one game and played the heck out of it. I would have read the manual cover to cover, probably several times, and when I finally fired up the console, I would have just given my full attention to that game. And that would be true whether it was a masterpiece like Sonic Adventure or whether I was playing something like Fighting Force 2. This is where my affinity for jank comes from, I think. When I rented Fighting Force 2, which I actually did, I got super into it, just taking in the world and enjoying all the little details I could find. See, it's a very generic action game, sure, but I was and probably always will be fascinated by low poly worlds. The little sunset train yard area at the start of the game here looks pretty slick. And the inclusion of this cheeky prick up here menacing you from on top of the train adds a sense of authorial intent straight off the bat. Enemies haven't just been randomly thrown around here, I'm living in a real world fighting actual baddies who've prepared for my arrival. Like I say, I wouldn't get a chance to check out another game for a while so why wouldn't I just make the most of what's in front of me? And I played the game with my dad but we didn't call it couch co-op back then because we didn't have people on the internet coining universal terms for us. We just said, pass over when you've done a level. For all we knew, we invented the concept. It was a quieter and more private time. I guess I'm not nostalgic for being a little kid, but in some ways I am nostalgic for a pre-internet world, or at very least a pre-social media world. There's plenty of good stuff about modern technology, so I'm not railing against progress. For one thing, I wouldn't be talking to you now without it. And of course, I think it's great that we can stay in touch with family and friends all over the globe and order goods and services at the touch of a button and all that stuff. At any given moment, I've got access to basically every book, film or game in the world all the time. But with that convenience also comes a bit of decision paralysis, or at least a lack of curation. If I've got PS Plus or Game Pass or if there's a Steam sale on or whatever, I've instantly got access to hundreds if not thousands of games. But am I really going to give any of them the same level of attention I did to Fighting Force 2? It's not likely. Because if I'd rented Fighting Force 2 in today's world, I would have just turned it off after a few minutes and tried something else. And then I'd probably try that for a few minutes and get bored and keep going and going, always thinking the grass was going to be greener on the other side. 
and never stopping to think that maybe it was me, and I just wasn't spending enough time or attention to get invested in a thing. If you want a non-video game example, we all binge watch stuff on streaming services now and really have to wait a week for the next episode. In some ways that feels good, immediate gratification and all that, but we miss out on a full week of talking to our friends and families, speculating on what will happen or what we want to happen, so an element of that immersion gets lost. I think those old rituals we had really added a tangible feeling of weight to an activity. For gaming, I'd be reading the manual as I said, admiring the box art, playing couch co-op and whatnot. This wasn't just some throwaway file I downloaded that I can get rid of the moment I feel bored, this was a proper work of art that demanded my attention. There was a real feeling of intention to start in a video game, kinda like how putting on a vinyl and sitting reading the lyrics feels more special and involved than just throwing an album on Spotify. Listen without distraction, if you will. And so I'd say old games are not inherently better than new ones, but the pomp and ceremony around the way we played back then made the experience feel more special. But of course, we can recapture said rituals. Just because Sony or Steam or GOG gives you every game in the world doesn't mean you gotta play them all. And we're grown-ups, we shouldn't be buying into all this fear of missing out nonsense. Personally, I decided this year to limit myself to three games per month, kinda like a weekly rental system. I only play, read about, and engage with those three games for that time period to give myself maximum immersion. And I've gotta say that so far I'm really finding myself getting more immersed and I'm enjoying it more. I'd miss that feeling and this has helped me to kind of get it back. Playing Bulk Slash for the first time with a fully translated manual, blasting through it with that glorious CRT look, working out the straps and levels for myself without let's plays or whatever, it's really been a trip. So I say love your nostalgia, and cherish it, and recapture it however you see fit. Just because we live in a faster paced world doesn't mean you can't slow down and vibe with that old school feeling. Thank you for watching friends, please drop a like or a comment if you had a good time, and I shall see you in the next one.